Up air can either be one of the most broken combo starters in the game, or just a completely useless move. But especially with the new combos I found, it is definitely worth learning how it works and how you should use it. To explain the move, I will have to go into quite a lot of detail regarding frame data, but I hope I can make it easy enough to follow along. So let's go with how to use up air. If you buffer a short up up air, it takes 29 frames to hit the ground again, and 33 frames to be able to act again if you don't fast fall. Jump squat not included. Up air itself needs 6 frames to have its first hitbox come out, so that's 27 frames between the first hitbox and being able to act again. That's a little too slow for us to come out of it, so of course we want to fast fall it. If we do that as soon as possible, on frame 15, it only takes 21 frames to land. Up air, however, starts auto cancelling on frame 23. So if we fast forward as soon as possible, we'd have to go through 10 frames of landing lag and thereby 25 frames between hit and being able to act. That's not a lot better than the usual 27 frames. So there are two solutions to get a better frame advantage. Solution number one is delaying your fast fall by ideally exactly two frames, so we land on frame 23 and have 27 total frames including the normal landing lag, which is 4 frames. Doing this pretty much perfectly only leaves 21 frames between the hitbox and being able to act, which enables a lot of combos which I will show later. Solution number 2 is delaying your up air so much that you get the same or more frame advantage after the hit. How much do we have to delay it? Well, we want to spend less than 21 frames until we can act again. As we already know, a buffered fast forward short up needs 21 frames to land. Add 10 frames of landing lag and we have 31 frames. If now the first hitbox of up air comes out on frame 10, the difference between the first hitbox and the ending of our landing lag is 21 frames again, which is the same as the first method. So in a nutshell, if we delay our short up up air by 4 or more frames, so it comes out on frame 10 or later, we will have the same or better frame advantage over our opponent compared to the first method. Doing this has some drawbacks mainly that it obviously comes out slower than the other one, but we will need both methods for the best results. Before we get to the new stuff, I want to show the easy combos first. All of these work best when started with a landed up air as low as possible, meaning you will hit the ground on the frame after the first hitbox. Of only this one up air, it is possible to combo into pretty much everything. Helikick, Thrupper, Back Air, FMP, SAK and even Forward Smash. And, of course, more up airs. To chain up airs into one another, there are two things you have to calculate for. The switch from delayed up air into rising up air and platforms. As a rule of thumb, always use delayed up air if you have the time for it. It is consistently easier to execute, it gives more frame advantage and it sends the opponents lower. After a certain point though, the delayed up air won't hit high enough anymore. At that point, you need to switch to rising up air, which can hit a little higher up. Once you start using rising up air, you also need to keep using it, as transitioning from rising to delayed up air would be too slow. Once you get near a platform, you again have to decide whether it's possible to still hit a delayed up air or a rising one. Rising up airs are harder to execute because you can't buffer the attack anymore. But both versions are possible. In regards to the rising method, again, you have to very slightly delay your fast fall, but it depends even more on your up air timing. I recommend just practicing on different platforms to get a consistent feeling for it. As a quick side note, up air trains across stage pretty much only work if the opponent eyes away from you. Otherwise, they will be launched too high too fast. In that case, simply finish the combo and proceed to juggle them. All of these combos can also be started with a rising up air. Rising up air can obviously hit all opponents jumping, but also a few tall characters standing. So combos like these are possible and definitely viable to go for in certain matchups. Lastly, you can also substitute the delayed up air with a back hit up air. With this, it is even easier to gain frame advantage, but it's harder to hit a neutral. If you've made it to this part, your patience will pay off. I will now talk about how to confirm a simple and safe neutral interaction, like an anti-air up air to cover full hops, into kill combos. But before I can show you all the applications, I want to explain when and why this works. Up air's amount of hit stun, the time until the opponent can act again after getting hit, depends on knockback and thereby percents as well as weight. I've made a quick chart to show how hit stun progresses over the percents for those characters. Between Bowser and Jigglypuff, there's an average of 4 to 6 frames in difference. 
With Mario in between, so to convert from one weight class to the next, simply move up or down around 10%. Rage also affects knockback and thereby hitstun, with 150% rage being equal to a 10% difference and 100% rage to a 5% increase. Up has a total of 35 frames until you can act again if you don't land during that time, 29 frames if you subtract the time it takes for the move to come out. Now if you look at the chart, you can see that after a certain threshold, the opponent experiences more than 29 frames of hitstun. You can probably take a guess on what I want to say. It is possible to combo out of a rising up air without having to touch the ground. You can anti-air someone in neutral and get a kill. You can catch a landing and get a kill. You can read a ledge jump and get a kill. In all those situations, a different read might have got you the same result, but the risk reward difference is huge. If you miss an FMP, you might get Ike up air. If you miss an up smash, you might get F smashed yourself. And if you miss a heli kick, you might get flooded. If you miss an up air though, well, who cares? Being able to just throw out a kill setup like it's nothing is invaluable. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as, oh, just up air heli kick. But that's why I will explain how and when this works now. There are three main lines of comboing out of this kind of up air. The fastest one is Thrupper on frame 3. If we add those 3 frames to the 29 frames calculated before, we know that our opponent has to be in hitstun for at least 33 frames if we want to hit them 1 frame before they can act, only 31 frames if we assume they have a frame 3 air dodge. There's just one problem, we fall faster than most other characters. Realistically, we won't be close enough to the opponent to hit the first hitbox of Thrupper, so in most cases you want to have 34 frames to hit the next big Thrupper hitbox. If we now look at our beautiful hitstun chart, we know Mario will suffer 34 frames of hitstun after he reached around 70%. And you see, up and now combos into Thrupper, as long as we maintain enough upwards momentum after hitting it. Usually we can only combo out of landing up air, which is predictable and slow. But now we have the option of jumping towards our opponent, immediately throwing out a hitbox and still getting a combo of it. As the percents rise, the up air knockback and hitstun will also increase. Until a certain point, these two cancel out, meaning that we can still combo into Thrupper for a while. For Mario, this would be between 68 and 104%, a respectable window. We can increase it even more though, by hitting with the back part of up air. An important note here is, that the launch angle does not depend on which hitbox you hit your opponent with. It only depends on whether you are to the left or right of them. On one hand, hitting the back part gives us more frame advantage at earlier percents. On the other hand, it is now more difficult to perform it while rising. As a result, the percent window shifts downwards but stays around the same at the top side border. Here are some percent ranges I tested for. This time I did not make a chart for each character as it depends a lot on positioning, but you can still get an idea of when it works when looking at the hitstun chart. As always, a slow air dodge and big body are useful, but fall speed is also an important factor. The lower the opponent falls, the faster we can reach them. The next combo option is probably the strongest one, up air into heli kick. Heli kick comes out at frame 8, but also hits a bit higher than Thrupper on the first hitbox. Add those 8 frames to the 29 total frames, and we need 38 frames of hitstun, 36 against frame 3 air dodges to be faster than our opponent. Take the hitstun chart into account, and Bowser will get hit from 90 to 102% with the front hit, and 67 to 106% with the back hit. A lot of characters will be immune to Heli Kick as follow-up, mainly because of fast air dodges or escape options. But especially the back hit will still give you good chances for a true combo. The eye in however makes combos out of the back hit impossible, and from the front hit more difficult, as they get launched higher up. The last combo route is up air into, well, up air. In very specific situations, doing this can be optimal and definitely the least risky option. The calculations for when it works are done the same as in the other two cases. To finish this video, here are some examples of combos when no land up air can be used. Keep in mind that especially with platforms, simpler combos might lead to the same results. But nevertheless, here's a quick showcase.
if you have anything I missed about Upair, please leave it in the comments. And if you want to support my channel, then consider subscribing. Until the next video.